We are back with our Wrath Lord, but a little bit different today. Welcome everyone, it's Alexor again. And I updated the build because I was playing around a lot with it because there is one item. Now this one is a bit of more of an expensive build. So if you don't have the money, did you see that? 320,000 crit, 180,000. This is on the low end. I've seen him do 600k, no problem. Many times over. So what does this build do? It's your classic Wrath Lord again. He's going to die now because of the Infernal Shade. But it's now a Frost Wrath Lord. And this is even better for many reasons. And it's due to this very item, the Lich Scorn. I was playing around with this for quite a while. And I actually like it better than the Necrotic version for a bunch of reasons. What does it do? Dread Shade is converted to Cold. Key thing. Dreadshed is our main damage dealer for the Wrath Lord because it turns or gives him all the buffs, attack speed buff and crit buffs. Another key thing though is frost by chance for minions affected by Dreadshed, 30%. 122% freeze rate multiplier for minions affected by Dreadshed. So we have to freeze, we have to frostbite. Great stuff, especially freeze is great. And then 6 cold damage with spells and attacks per attached Infernal Shade for minions affected by Dread Shade. Meaning if you have Dread Shade on your minion and Infernal Shade, it also gets plus 6 cold damage. And plus 1% cold penetration for minions affected by Dread Shade per intelligence. So we, we scale our damage with intelligence, so this is all great. Okay, good. This item alone doesn't do it though. Uh, it also has 15 intelligence and spell critical strike and wall retention. So it's generally great for our build because we also run a lot of ward. So basically we turned red shade into a cold spell, right? See, it's cold now, so it does scale with cold damage. And red shade itself... Um, where is it? For example, this gets significantly, significantly, I can talk, more damage, 40%. There's another one, increase attack speed, cast speed, and there was another one where it gives damage, or damn, for example. Damage, there it is, area and damage. So basically, the damage we give, or damage buff we give to our Wrath Lord with Dread Shade is now cold damage, which is super great. And... This alone, again, doesn't cut it. So basically what you need is... Well, the build really comes alive with this weapon as well. The Apogee of Frozen Light. So you can already tell, you need the Lich Scorn, you need the Rathlord's Harbor, you need the Apogee of Frozen Light, and if you want to succeed at all, you also need the Exanctionist to even have Ward. And it would be even better if you also had this. Now these are easy to get, right? These three, I would say, are very simple to get. These two are not that easy. This one, I guess, if you do, like if you run prophecies on swords, and I will have a video on how to actually set up your prophecies to make it easy, then it's somewhat easy to get. I got this like four times, and one with LP, if, if you, if you can, as you can tell, if I could talk. Wow, that was, that was difficult. <laughs> um, this one's also quite simple to get. It took me a while to get this. You, this drops from the Frost, Loy, Frost Lich for Moses. In the, um, where is it? Blood, Frost, and Death timeline, the end boss of it. Obviously, it drops easier if you play in power timelines, but actually it dropped when I was playing another character, which is quite interesting. I was trying to farm this on two streams, I believe, didn't get it. So this build is not a cheap one, all right? I want to make this clear. You, you need a bunch of uniques to get it. Why I like this, though, is because it's more consistent in its damage than the Necrotic one. I have noticed in my playthroughs that the higher crits are more likely to happen. Plus you have to freeze and frostbite so you do even more damage over time and can potentially even freeze bosses, for example. This is what I like over the regular necrotic one. If you don't have these items or you don't want to farm for these, then I wouldn't recommend it. Um, the necrotic one does enough damage, you know it yourself, it does 100, 200, 300,000 crits as well. I got this one too, I think 720,000 damage was the highest crit I got our Rathlaw to. Our great lad over here. Um, and this isn't even maxed out, right? You, if you put your legendary potential on it, you can max this out a lot. So what you want, I mean, Exanctionist is self-explanatory what it does, right? It gives you ward. 
The frozen eyes of Formosus are great because 113% increased minion cold damage. Now this one is easy to get, right? Um, because you get this from the Frostlich Formosus as well, and he drops this quite regularly, even at lower uh, lower ranks. So you should have this multiple times. Save it five times or something. This shouldn't be an issue. And the minion cold damage is insane. Also, minion freeze rate per stack of chill. And freeze rate per stack of chill in general. Lots of good stuff. Now, what I did is, the other ones are still just minion damage, minion damage. Um, oh, this one I have because minion critical strike multiplier. Um, because there are multiple ways to, to scale your damage with this build. Either you go just straight for minion damage, as you can see the, the first affix on this. Minion damage. Because base minion damage and then he crits obviously does more damage. Very simple. But minion critical strike multiplier means since we are always crit or critting with our Wrath Lord, if we multiply that, this also does more damage. So you can decide or look for your exalted items, what you have. Do you go for minion damage or minion critical strike? It's fine because you're always going to crit with your Dread Shade due to... This down here, Egoism, you can't see it, hold up. Egoism down here. This one, minion always crits. Right, it gives you the red shade a cooldown, but it doesn't matter. This also is just minion damage, right, very simple. Now what I also did, because you can really ramp up the damage a lot with this, is if you get an exalted item. This one, the Skull of Shrine Boots of Defense. Also gives minion damage, right? And if you have this affix on it, the increased minion damage, you also get the minions teleported around you after you use Traversal skill. Because I went with Transplant. You could also go with Skelly Mage, if you don't have this. Because in Skelly Mage, you also have... Oh, I can't see this here, can I? I can. It's over here. Grave Passage. When you directly cast some Skeleton Mage, you are teleported to target location. And, oh no, it's actually not this, hold up. It's this one, yeah, Death's Cavalry, right? Minions teleported with you. And if you scale it to three, you teleport, I think, seven minions with you. So if you don't have this item, you go for Skelly Mage or Transplant. Transplant is better though, I'll explain in a second when we go with the skills why that is. I first want to go with the items. So this is generally very powerful. And if you are really good at crafting, you know, then you can get your last steps of the living and put... The mini damage and minions teleported around you on that if you have one with LP on it and you are lucky enough to put it on there. Because then you also have the Vault DK threshold, you have extra Vault and movement speed, which is even better. I'm working on that, not there yet. So this is sort of to maximize the build if you want to do that. Another key thing though is to really maximize the damage is this one. Experimental Chain. Minion damage, all fine, this is great if you have this, but also 4 wallet has zombies summoned on potion use and 40% more minion damage. The key thing is the potion use. Because, you know, your Rav Lord, it says down here, um, where is it? Yeah, while it max revs, the Rav Lord casts necrotic beams and regularly consumes all your non rev minions to empower itself, gaining temporary maximum health equal to 10% of their health and 10 spell damage for 10 seconds. So this is why we constantly, I can show you if I cast my Volatile Zombie down here. Heats them up. And now he's empowered, he has empowered damage for 10 seconds. And now if you, if we, for example, in, in case of a boss, you give him all his buffs, the Infernal Shade and Dread Shade, then you cast your Volatile Zombie, then you eat all your, uh, you drink all your potions, it creates Volatile Zombies, he eats all of them up, now for 10 seconds he has a million damage, literally a million. So you can one-shot tier 4 dungeon kings or whatever. This is what this does. This is the key why we have this. Also, it's Vault DK Threshold. This is a very good one. Uh, fits very well into my build. You should have killed enough Exiled Mages to get this. You should have most of these. And if you're really good, you can also slam this again with Legendary Potential on a... On a uh, Legendary, or Unique rather. Um... I'm gonna make a video about how this works you, because you need exalts, right? To put them in, uh, craft them into uniques. You can do this also with exal um, with experimental ones. You can make them exalted. It's not as easy, but it does work. Um, but it's too much for this video. So this is the base idea. Now, if you don't have these items, you can go different routes, okay? 
For example, this build is more of a glass cannon build because I only sit at 2.6k watt. It's not that much. It's okay, but not crazy. I mean, overall, we have like 4k health due to the idols. I'll get to these in a second. But I still die fast and high corruption. So I got a ditch, especially, um, for example, tier 4 lightless arbor. Uh, if he stomps me, I still die right away or boss damage. So you got to be careful with this. It's not as tanky. If you want to be more tanky, you can go with the last steps of the living. And, for example, the frostbite shackles. And you also run the chronostasis. If you have these or any of these, as you can tell, now my water is going up a lot. I don't know when it will stop. I'm already over 5k health now, 7k. We, we have 7k health now. It's still going up. And this is because these all give us ward and ward retention. So this is the more safe build. If you die too much, you might want to go with these, but you lose damage. Especially minion cold damage, right? Because this is from the Apogee of Frozen Light. And um, you lose the teleport ability with this one. The last house of the living you can generally always run if you don't want to teleport around with your with your um, transplant too much. But I will show you in a second how I do this because I actually teleport a lot um, because the cooldown is also pretty low. Um, I like that benefit a lot. Now the frostbite shackles they also increase the frostbite duration, freeze rate multiplier, ward gain on freeze, all these kind of things. It's very great in general, great addition to this build. But then you see you're already sitting at like what is it? Three, four, seven, seven uniques and a set item. So <laughs> that's kind of insane, right? Look at what you have. You can play around with this. If you don't have the chronostasis, which also gives you a wall per second, right? And intelligence. Intelligence also scales our damage. You can also go for Regish of the Grave. Everyone should have this one. Um, your minions spell damage, or minion spells and bow, but we care about spells, deal 190% increased damage. This is again just damage. And this is a level 5, and you get this a lot, I have this 5 times, so you should have this throughout playing through the campaign. Not a big deal. What you can also do is Jura's Obsession, these gloves, because what this says, interestingly, stats on this item also apply to your minions. And you want to have this with LP on it, so you got to run the Temporal Sanctum dungeon with higher um, tiers, on higher tiers, because then, if you throw this in, and for example, you put um, cast speed on it, right? Because there, I actually checked, there is no item that gives minion cold damage for some reason, except for these, this one, I believe. Yeah, that's the only one that gives minion cold damage. I checked. So you can give a minion cold damage on this one, would be nice. But instead, you can give cast speed, so you can actually shoot his beams faster, which is more damage, right? You can also go for there is one that's called I have it here. No, oh, here. Um, there it is. Minion melee damage and minion spell damage. This is also an FX you can put on, for example, your, your sword. You can also put it on the Jura's Obsession. Also going to link this um, build, by the way, of course. It's not finished here, but I'm going to have to finish one linked. Um, yeah, increased cast speed. See, there it is. What you also can put on is current health lost per second and missing health gained as ward per second. Because this applies to your minions as well. Meaning, your Wrath Lord gains ward. So it makes him even tankier, because sometimes he dies fast, especially with your Infernal Shade. So if you have this affix, that's insane. Other than that, go for Intelligence, or just Minion Damage, Minion Critical Strike Multiplier. These are your scaling items. Or Scaling... Um, scaling. Also, Cold Damage works, of course, because um, Dread Shade now scales with Cold Damage, but it's not as much as, for example, Caspi. Um, because there's not many that do that much Cold Damage, I believe. So Jura's Obsession, if you have it with 2 or 3 LP and you have the affixes, you can really scale this build up a lot and you can do a million crits consistently, pretty much. And I'm still working on this, but I want to share this build right now because it's pretty great. So it's either this one or um, the Frostbite Shackles. I mean, if you find this one with um, some LP as well and you slap on Intelligence or Minion Spell Damage, that's also great, but again, these don't apply to your minions. All these stats also apply to your minions, which is awesome. Right, I'm still gonna use this one over the last episode of living. It's less tanky, as you can tell. Um, and if I find a, a good one with, like, I can, for example, throw these in that and get the minion damage out of it, which would also not be bad. 
But it's kind of a miss because it gets the minion damage anyway. You can play around with this and figure out what works for you. This was a lot now about the items, I know. <laughs> All right. So this is basically the base item idea you want to have with this. Um, idols. Idols are simple. You go for health. You want to have all the health idols. I don't even have all of them. Um, see, this has percentage increase is better because it gives you more over time. 20 health is not really that much. 8% uh, increased. Minion cooler and recovery speed also is helpful if you have it. Also, minion critical strike helps a lot. This one is great because it also has health. So you want to focus on health. But if you can also throw in the minion critical strike or what I also have. Oh, these ones are not great. Yeah, increase health. And like the hybrid health thingies. Or the, where is it? Yeah, cost of spells, for example, you can go with. That's fine. Recovery speed so it can actually cast faster. This is all great. But you want to focus on health. Because you want to be tankier, especially later in the higher corruption. All right, that's it about the items. Now, before we go to the passives, let's look at the skills a little. So we have our Dread Shade. We have our Infernal Shade. We have the Transplant, Wrath Lord, and the Volatile Zombie. It's very easy. You cast your Wrath Lord. We just did it. Do I actually want to have any of these? Bleed Chance. It's good for our Warlock. Um, we... Uh, stun Chance. Okay. So what we do, we cast the Wrath Lord. Then we cast Infernal Shade on him. Then Dread Shade. And then we cast our Volatile Zombie. He gobbles them up. And then we can jump around. We teleport him with us. I actually gotta go down there. We can teleport again. Bring him over. See, the cooldown is very low. He snipes. And we cast our volatile zombie whenever it's ready. Because it only lasts, his buff only lasts 10 seconds. He snipes them all. We just run around. Teleport him with us if he's stuck somewhere, for example. Go over here. Cast the volatile zombie again. See, there was a 700,000 crit. 200,000. Easy. Easy game. Cast a Volatile Zombie again. And the key thing is, as long as you do this, he doesn't die. Because he will slowly die to... Oh, now he lost his Dread Shade, so we get a cast it on him again. There we go. Okay, this was already it. And you, you just want to jump around a lot and um, bring him with you, so he actually attacks properly. Um, The key thing is... See, he died now, because if he doesn't attack, he dies very fast due to the Infernal Shade and the Dread Shade. They slowly kill him, right? They gave him all the buffs, but they also slowly kill him. So you want to run around. This is why I like the Transplant a lot. It has a short cooldown if you skill it properly, so you can constantly bring him into the fight so he doesn't die. Otherwise, you have to recast him all the time, have to reapply all the buffs, and especially the Infernal Shade buff stacks over time. Um, which is over here. The Manic Pyre. This is a maximum. He casts it over like each second, right? Yeah. A tank cast speed is increased each second up to a maximum, which is 70%. I tried other builds because, as you can tell, I have 24 points in um, the Infernal Shade. But I only have these. And I don't want anything else. Now, people also go for this route over here because we get Armor Shred. Has a chance to shred armor on hit. I think it's up to 400% on enemies. Or 200%. Something like that. I don't like this, personally. Because this does damage to my Wrath Lord. It kills him faster. Ignite chance. Ignites himself. And um, fire penetration as well. This is why I don't like this. So I just keep it at this. I don't want anything else. <laughs> it's weird, I know. You're going to sit on 14 to be able to apply it. But you don't want anything else. You don't even need the mana reduction. Or cast speed. It's pointless. I mean, you can go for the cast speed. So you can apply it faster. Whatever. But it's really not necessary. I mean, you can, you can turn this. Yeah, fine. So this is what you want. You don't need this. If you want to have the armor shred, be aware he will die faster because he gets the damage, the fire damage from this one. So what this does is, damage in large area, we have to go for this even though we don't want it. Can now only attach to your minions, but your minions are also damaged. Yes. This is more direct damage. We have to take this even though we don't want it. And this is what we actually want, right? This is the only... Like these two, because this also gives them unlimited duration, right? So Inferno Shade lasts forever on your minion. But this is really the only one we want. Increased attack speed. 
I tried other builds. I tried, for example, Spirit Plague on the enemy instead of Infernal Shade. Doesn't do enough damage. This is the main damage dealer. And you can also go for the haste. Um, so they run faster but this is really the only thing you want everything else sucks because everything else does more damage to him and kills him faster the aoe damage from infernal shade is pointless because he just snipes them from a distance anyway so you don't get any buff from that ignore all of this you only want to go for this that's your infernal shade then we have the dread shade very simple the key thing as i mentioned already over here is the egoism you want to sc scale down here you go for the more damage and on egoism Simple. This is the key thing that brings this build to life, right? So he crits every single time. Over here. Um, this is sort of a nice addition. Increased effect of all its buffs for each 3% of missing minion health because he will eventually miss some health. It doesn't do as much if you teleport around all the time, but I still want to have it. Um, yeah, this one. Reduced health decay, of course, and more necrotic damage. The health decay is great because Red Shade also kills his health. Some people also go for this one. Red Shade now increases attack and cast speed of the target minion, but blinds it as well. I don't like it. I want him to hit all the time. The 40% cast speed... It's not that great in my opinion, but maybe that's just me. Uh, minion's knowledge area is irrelevant, but you have to get it for this one. Red Shade no longer drains the health of the minion, but it's attached to and lasts much longer, but you're limited to one. The, it, we only want it for the increased uh, shade duration. It basically just change it, changes it from... Um, it rains, it doesn't drain health, it just takes more damage. It's just a different way of how the mechanic is applied. Um, doesn't really matter to us. What we want is the shade duration, so it lasts longer. Yeah, more cast speed. Um, then we have the chance to apply damned and damned each second to all enemies and friendly minions. The friendly minions doesn't matter, but damned is also a great thing. And over here, um, yeah, more damage. That's it. Yeah, 6% more damage. That's what we want to. Transplant is a key thing as well. Because of this, bone armor. When you use transplant, you are granted bone armor for 4 seconds, which grants you armor and less damage taken. Makes us tanky as fuck. So this is also why we want to teleport around all the time, because it lasts um, for 4 seconds. And the cooldown of the... The cooldown is reduced to... What is it now? 3.4. Oh, 3.9, sorry. So you can basically just transplant all the time and keep your bone armor up consistently so whenever it comes off cooldown you cast it again also does 2k damage so it's fine what number is more effective we need this and what number duration of course we also need uh, cost less health because obviously transplanting costs health so you want to max this one out and gives you haste and frenzy we don't need a frenzy but the haste is nice to run around faster yeah rain of blood it creates additional body that detonates on arrival which is nice um I want to also go for this while in the merge. Transplant explosions instantly kill enemies that are below a health threshold. The health threshold thing is great. This only goes to, I mean, you have two points. 10%, it goes to 15. But anyone who is under 10% dies right away. I like this a lot in the harvest tree with the warlock. So the transplant is really just for armor and the haste. In Final Shade, we've done that. Wrath is very simple. Because the Dread Shade, uh, the Dread Shade, the Wrath Lord also scales with your Wrath Tree. So you go for more damage. Necrotic damage is converted to cold with the Dread Shade, so that's fine. Necrotic damage, um, we only go here because of this. Base critical strike chance. And there is also critical strike chance and critical strike need more damage. So this is all crits. You want to have this, of course. More maximum health, so the tank here. Um, health no longer decays. Yeah, okay, this doesn't even apply. A uh, largely more damage. Okay, yeah. Larger more damage. So that's pretty much it. I mean, you have three more points due to my items. You usually don't go to 25. If you can, you can look into more maximum health to make him tankier. Can cause enemies to bleed if you want. And we have the volatile zombie. Very simple. What you do with this, you gotta go especially for this one. You summon additional zombies per cast because you don't want to Summon them all one by one, you want to have them right in there. This casts five at once, and then this creates corpse parasites, but there is also one. What was it? Yeah, the more damage is all relevant. We go here because we want the fear, and there's also threshold, also pretty nice. More damage, that's all cool. Movement speed. Oh yeah, this one. 
Yeah, yeah. You can think of this is actually what I was searching for. You can either go for Shepherd of Frells and get rid of this one. Because this creates these, these lavas or whatever, and uh, corpse parasites for four seconds. And this one creates wang skeleton vanguards when they die. So I might want to respect this one and go only into this and do something else. Over here, for example, and damage and heal. This hell heals you. Of course, Grayson, this also gives you a yeah, it gives you ward. This is great for us. Other than health. Um yeah, you can have both, then it's a sort of chance chance change. Chance what is created. Um, or it's a, it's a mixture. You can look at it. You can also go for the fear up here. So you can play around with this a little bit. The only thing you really need is this one. Um, because you want to have them all at once. And the rare flood gains, gains the health and the damage from the volatile zombies. So this is also why we go for more damage. That's it about the spells. Uh, yes, the spells. Then we go into the passives. Passives are very simple. Really, very simple. What you do is minion damage. Actually, this uh, I want to remove this, I believe. Yeah, I didn't get around to do it. Never mind. Uh, forbidden intelligence. Yeah, intelligence scales your, your minion damage. See? Scaling tag for Dread Shade. Intelligence. Cold spell buff. So intelligence scales him a lot. It scales a lot of his damage. You go for all the intelligence. You gotta do this because this gives us wall retention. That makes us more tanky. You want to be tankier. Also resistances. Great. Minion attack speed. Minion cast speed. Simple. This is pretty much what you do. You go for ward retention or ward in general. Intelligence. Minion damage. Minion attack speed. That's what you do. Again. Minion attack speed. Minion damage. Minion cast speed. Ward retention. Great. Minion physical damage. Minion necrotic damage. Again. Shred Armor. This is a nice addition. You can go with this if you want. Don't need to, but Shred Armor is always great against mobs. Minion Attack Speed. Minion Cast Speed. Minion Health also. Great. Makes him tankier. Necrotic Damage. Yeah, we actually don't really need this because we turn to Cold Damage, but we gotta wanna have this. Minion Necrotic Damage. Minion Elemental Damage. And then we go over here. Minion Critical Multiplier. This is the key thing. Also, Increased Minion Cold Damage. So you need to have this maxed. You get you gotta get to this as fast as possible. You can also go. I might actually change this up. Um, because the necrotic damage doesn't really help us. Yeah, we might want to go this route instead. Yeah, so you can't do this, you can't get rid of this and go here because minion health leech, pretty nice. Freeze rate multiplier, and then we have here uh, intelligence and minion critical strike chance. So it even in increases this more. I will set it up in the build. This is still a work in progress, but I wanted to show you where we are right now. So we also take a little bit into the Lich. Because intelligence, again, scales our damage. Health makes us more, um, yeah. So, so uh, increase our survivability. I'm lacking the word here. Health region, vitality, intelligence, more damage. So the Lich is basically just for health and intelligence to give more damage to our our Wrath Lord. And that and then here we just stand here let him do his thing sometimes cast our water zombies or eat him up and he snaps everything while we just chill and he kills the entire Echo. No problem. I have this and it sucks. Ooh, damage over time. So yeah, that's the Frost Wrath Lord. I hope this one helped and you're going to have fun with it. Again, it's a bit of a more expensive build. So yeah, I hope this one helped. I like this guy, uh, this build a lot more than the other one because I like frost damage a lot because of the freeze chance. This, I think this is pretty nice. So let me know if you have any additions to it. If you have any ideas how you can make this even better or any, any thoughts on that. And I think this is it for now though with the Wrath Lord. And I think we maxed him out as much as possible. And there's no other way other than the, the cold one. Um, we can, of course, still build some insane items on it, and I will probably go for this at some point. But yeah, let me know what you think of it, and I'll see you in the next video.